All right, I think I did this right. You never know, Alex, with me and technology, you never know. All right, everybody, it's been a while since I've done a video like this, and I just wanted to come on. Um, I saw some, some uh, comments under some of the past YouTube videos that I've done asking uh, for me to talk to a trader in my group. So I thought, uh, I thought a little bit about that, and I thought about who to invite on to have a conversation with, and I think Alex Z is maybe one of the best examples of a trader in my group. He came in, I'll let Alex explain it. <laughs> Alex, how long have you been trading? Two and a half years now. All right, how long have you been with, with how long have you been trading with me? Coming up on two years. Seriously, so, two years? Yeah, it was summer of 2020. Holy shit. So, yeah, just June will be our two year anniversary. So, hey, happy anniversary. Yeah. All right. So what was that like? What was what what was it like before before you had before we had met and what's your trading like been, you know, uh, and go as go as far as you want to. Yeah, well, I, when I first started trading, it was uh, it was interesting. So just came out of college, didn't have a job lined up, didn't have any internships, really, uh, really had struggled through school. And so. When that time did arise, you know, there's a couple options. It was either go back to school or learn trading. And, you know, I, I, I picked up, I just went straight to learning trading because, you know, I was like, I, you know, I didn't like school. I, I don't want to go back and hit the books and be in the library for eight hours a day and just want something new. And so when I first started trading, you know, step by step, you know, I kind of I kind of had to learn to fall in love with trading. Um, and I didn't, I didn't love it at first, but it was something where I was like, okay, at least I'm doing something. And... As I, as I started to go through it, I started, you know, more pieces I started to fall in love with. And I guess, you know, the, the one piece that I never really understood until I joined the group was the mindset side of it. And when you exposed me to that and I joined the PAX group in June of 2020, uh, that, that's when I truly, you know, fell in love with trading because I realized how beautiful it was and, you know, how much it demanded of yourself. And that was the moment where I was like, you know what, this, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. Uh, but prior to that, how do you fall in love with something that's as painful as it has been? It's been painful. It hasn't been. It's, it's painful, right? But, you know, I think if you were to really discover who you are and, you know, what you're made of, this is the only thing that will, you know, show you who you truly are. Because there have been so many days in my life, the weeks, months, where it's like, just feel like I'm hitting my head on a rock and I just feel like I'm going nowhere. And, you know, those fears, those insecurities, they arise. And, only thing you can do is just resist them because that's all you have, right? As a trader, it's, it's learning how to fight back and learning how to pick yourself up. That is, I think for me, it's just been the key component of, you know, what's made me successful is that ability to, you know, not stay down. You know, everyone's going to get knocked down, but, you know, we all have the choice to get back up and, you know, to overcome those hard times. And in those moments, of, you know, those, those dark periods are the, those periods that are going to force you to grow, right? You know, when you hit rock bottom, the only way you can go is up. And, you know, that same thing as trading is just the only difference is it, sometimes it just feels repeated. Um, and yeah, I think the love to just get better in all areas of my life, just not, not even in front of the screen, but, you know, everything's connected into your trading. So, you know, when I fail in the market, you know, I'm probably also failing somewhere outside the market and, you know, you have to be aware of, you know, what's holding you back and, you know, what limitations you're setting on yourself. And I think that's, that's the beauty and for, that's the beauty I find in trading. Jeez, that, 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 that is, that there's a lot in there. Um, so this is usually kind of how you and I talk anyway, right? I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, uh, so Alex, I've been mentoring Alex for a while and, um, uh, uh, you know, we'll get into some pretty good and heavy conversations. And I think it's important to note that to be a great trader means, you know, and I've talked about this before in, in past videos, that there's like three components to my process. One is the mindset, two is execution, and three is technical awareness. Not technical analysis, but technical awareness. <laughs> Out of those three, then that, that forms, I think, um, you know, that the, the, the mindset, tech, uh, the execution, and the technical uh, awareness I think then forms, um, you know, a basis for us to be able to to approach the markets and and put this technical framework around it with our execution along with our mindset. But uh, you know, what has been 
what has been tell us a little about a little bit about your trajectory in each one of those because you know there's four mm -hmm. lanes of traders right and i talk about this a lot there's the 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 roller coaster trader who's consistently losing money then there's the break even trader and i think that's the phase that most of us spend the majority of the time in you know mm -hmm. and, and under that there's the subsections of uh, most traders think that to be a successful trader means that we have to manage our risk. Well, that's why most traders fail, because mm -hmm. that's that's what gets us to the the break even point is learning how to manage our risk. But people that don't learn how to break into the third phase of trading, which is um, consistently profitable, that those traders learn how to manage their risk and they learn how to manage their profit. Then the fourth trajectory of trading or the fourth lane of traders is the ultimately profitable traders a very small percentage that will make upwards into the seven and eight figures of of, of income from their trading strictly from their trading and those traders learn how to not only manage their their profit but learn how to manage their uh learn how to manage their risk <laughs> which get them to break even learn how to manage their profit which gets them consistently profitable they learn how to exploit their profit learn how to add to their as we talk about a lot learn how to add to their mm -hmm. positions without adding to their risk. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's a whole lot of stuff that I just threw out there. Tell us mm -hmm. a little bit about your trajectory as a trader, what it was like when you first, what was it like when you first came into the group two years ago? Yeah, when I first came into the group, I think I remember that first day vividly, you know, trading the opening range for the very first time. It was, you know, I had an amazing trade, first trade of the day, and it was like, oh, like, you know, I, this, this system's easy. Like, you know, everyone can do this, you know? <laughs> All it is is taking, getting along the high, getting short the low, then like, you know, I'm going to be a millionaire in no time. And you know, that's, that's never the fact, you know? <laughs> um, but when I first came in, I think I had a lot of execution issues and I don't even think I was aware of my mindset. I don't even think I was aware of the technicals. I was just trying to learn how to execute because I came from uh, the system that I traded before was so absurdly wrong. Like I look at how I manage risk now and it's like, I would never do the things that I would do, you know, the first eight months of my trading career, because it's just like, you know, there's, there's not a risk management framework. It's all focused on winning. Where it's like, okay, well, winning half the game, you're going to lose 50% of the time as well. And it's like, if you have that one loser that just gets out of hand, you know, you're back at square one. And so for me, I think I was very focused on execution and just learning how to do things right. But as you've mentioned time and time again, you get so boggled up in the execution that you don't even know what you're doing or you, you're not even looking for a signal, you're not looking where to trade, you're just focused on execution, taking that small extent. And I think that's where I got caught up for a while, where I was, you know, doing things right, but there wasn't any, there wasn't any deliberate aim. It was like, you know what? Oh, I'm, I'm taking these trades out of the opening range. Okay, expense, expense, expense. Where, you know, I look back at those days and I'm like, there's no signal behind that. And letting the market, you know, tell you when to trade and how to trade. Um, and that was probably the thing that took a long time for me to fully understand is that, you know, your market, your focus has to be on the market first and foremost, like the market's going to tell you everything you need to know. You just have to sit there silently, presently, and just be aware of what it's telling you, because there are days where, you know, the price tag is going off the dome. You can't even keep track of NASDAQ, but you know, that's telling me something. There's days where, you know, NASDAQ looks exactly like the S and P and that's telling me something as well. And so for me, it's, you know, so so focused on execution and just trying to pick up on nuances and stay in the game long enough where I could you know get a idea of how to trade my system efficiently. Um, but within that, you know, there's there's definitely trial and error that comes with your execution, right? Because you know I'm not going to trade S&P the same way I'm going to trade Nasdaq because there's different nuances in how the market trades. Um, and I think when it, yeah when it comes down to execution, uh, you can't be so tied up in it to the point where you're solely focused on executing because you have to see the bigger picture, right? You know, you can manage your expenses, but you know, once you see that trade that you know you have to be in, you, you have to work for that trade. It's managing your expenses to get that trade on. At the end of the day, everything is just a position. Losing, lo lo lose the forest beyond the trees, right? Or, or lose yes, the exactly. Exactly. <laughs> it's so easy to do. Yeah. You're in the trees. You're trying to keep your expenses small. You're executing in and out, mm -hmm. you know, trying to get those scratches, mm -hmm. trying to get those scratches. Mm -hmm. That that mm -hmm. by the time the market makes its move and it's mm -hmm. it, it's telegraphing its move, mm -hmm. you're still lost in 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 the execution mm -hmm. part. Now yeah. that's 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 an important skill to get, you know. And, and this 
this is another reason why I always suggest that traders come in and they trade on the simulator for the time being to learn how to get things going. And you, 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 you weren't too keen on doing that. You were young and no. <laughs> you wanted to make it now, you know, mm -hmm. but to, to get that part down, it's really, really important to get that execution mm -hmm. part and to get mm -hmm. those, keep those expenses small so that mm -hmm. they don't become losses. We don't take losses in our group mm -hmm. expenses. We spend money to make mm -hmm. money. Yeah. But then we have to be aware of what the market is trying to tell us. What mm -hmm. is the market doing? Are we looking for, you know, are we looking to pay for the trade in 10 points in the NASDAQ and 50 points in the first target, 120 points at the next target, 400 points at the flattened target? You know, what's this market telling us and, and how mm -hmm. do we use our execution and our technical awareness? And I, I differentiate between technical analysis and technical awareness because technical analysis can get, get us bogged down. Analysis, paralysis by analysis, right? And we can mm -hmm. get so bogged down again in our technical analysis that we forget about the execution part, where, you know, and we, we, then it becomes more about me. I need to be right. I, I'm, I know the market is going to stop here. I'm going to get short mm -hmm. here. I'm going to, you know, mm -hmm. and now we start buying breaks and selling rallies and Mm -hmm. That rarely works. I know a lot of traders mm -hmm. made a lot of money doing that, but I don't know too many traders that have said before, I don't know too many traders that have actually kept the money that they've made from buying breaks and selling rallies. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we, we technical awareness is going to be, I think in my mind, it's going to be about, you know, knowing what the market is telling us, mm -hmm. knowing where, you know, the pay, pay line, the first targets, 50, 60 points away, next target, you know, flat target, so on and so forth. It's knowing where the market can go and where it will go, which is why we have a trade mm -hmm. every morning. We know that above the opening range, we're going to be long to this part, that part, and this point. Below the opening range, we don't know if the market's going to break out lower or higher. You know, we, we have a thesis, but we don't trade that. Mm -hmm. The price action, we know that below the opening range, we're going to cover here, 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 and here. So, you know, the execution part, you know, and, and that's another thing too. And we've talked, you and I have talked a lot about this. When we talk about don't trade your PL, don't trade your PL. You're so focused on not trading your PL that you end up trading your PL. Yeah. You're so, <laughs> you're so focused yeah. on execution that you wind up getting lost in your execution. Yeah. Uh, how did you yeah. overcome that? And how did you start to, to recognize what the market was telling you so that you can take effective action in the market while keeping your expenses small? I want to say for me, how that changed was, you know, it, it took a lot of trial and error um, <laughs> and a lot of shooting myself in the foot to see how the market works. Where yeah, I think with any system, I've only traded two systems, but I feel like there was time for, you know, if you don't truly trust your system, you, you're never going to make it work for you. And if there's times where, you know, I'd be getting short above, yeah, short above the opening range high and long below the opening range low. And it's like, you know, from seeing those mistakes and actually seeing where the market went by then, it was like, oh, I could have just taken the easy trade, you know, not, not, you know, not fought against the market, you know, been in the right trade. But it's, you know, being aware of, you know, the mistakes you're making. And then, you know, when you start to reflect on, you know, the chart on the day or, you know, you're doing your homework and you're realizing, hey, what have I done better? It's like, for me, it, all, it always came down to just being on the right side of the opening range. Yeah. And once that started to click on my head, then I was like, okay, well, if I know the market's above or below the opening range, and that's the direction it wants to trade in, then I don't have to fight the market. I have to join the market. And I don't mind taking expenses to join something. And if it doesn't end up going to where I think it's going to go, the market's telling me something at the end of the day. So it's like, that's why, you know, I don't have, like, you, you truly don't have any emotional attachment when you realize that everything the market's going to do is giving you information about the market. So if you take that scratch, and you put the trade back on and it scratches again, that's going to give me a signal to, hey, I need to look the other way now because, you know, it's, I'm trying to position myself for the market to go here, but it's not going here. So now I have an extra clue where, okay, now the market's going up. I can join it now you, while I'm protecting what, myself. What are you looking at when, what, what are you looking at above the opening range or below the opening range? What are you looking at to judge whether the market's going higher or lower? What are some tools, matchups? Yeah, matchups, for example, that's you know, our big quarterly targets, settlement targets, you know, if we're not breaking, for example, you know, if the S&P is trading at 4409, which is, you know, March settlement target, and, you know, we're testing it, and we're testing it, and we're testing it, and I'm positioning myself, and I keep scratching out, well, I'm not going to, you know, keep trying to force that trade. It's like trying to put a circle into a square, right? It's just not going to yeah. fit. You got to, you know, yeah. 
That was a great yeah, you, word to say that. Yeah. That's a big word. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's just the market's not ready. And if it does, it's like, you, know, you don't need to spend that money here and now. It's, everyone forgets that. Is, you know, we, we can get so caught up in anticipating the move that, you know, the move never comes to fruition and we end up over trading it. And, you know, that's, that's not a good feeling either. Um, but I guess, you know, matchups are, are a huge one as well, where, you know, if I see, you know, NASDAQ trading, what's a good number? If we see NASDAQ trading 14.095 prior to yeah. S&P trading 44.09, both are the settlements of March. And I see NASDAQ below 14, uh, 14.095 and S&P is trading around 44.50. Well, that's telling me that, you know, S&P is the strength and NASDAQ is the weakness. So I'm going to have to trade that accordingly. And so when I see those matchups off in a sense, and then I see it come down to another level, say 43.80 and, you know, uh, 13.870, and I start to see the market stop there, that's going to give me, you know, an idea of, hey, maybe I want to get long here and, you know, take them right back up to the, to the settlement prices. Um, so just being aware of, you know, how the markets are trading in conjunction with one another. You know, I think that was such a big thing that I, I never really was conscious of, but I always wrote them down. And then, you know, I feel like you know, from a technical awareness standpoint that I've been relatively new on the technical side. And I think, you know, that probably started to manifest in the last three months where, you know, my charts just ended up, uh, charts ended up uh, not saving my data. So I had to go back through the whole ladder and price everything out. But, you know, doing that simple action gave me reference into the market and seeing how it trades. What do you mean? When you, when you talk about um, uh, going through the ladder, ladder and pricing everything out, what do you mean? Yeah, so just targeting out the market from head to toe, from, you know, going all the way back to, you know, 2021 and, you know, having all those old targets and, you know, seeing how the market traded as a room. Do you put them um, on your jobs or do you put them on, on your charts behind I, you? I put them on my charts. I'm, I'm a visual person. I, like, I can remember the prices, but it's easier for me to put it on a chart and just see it level by level. Um, it's kind of like a, like, a, like a playbook almost where I'm like, okay, like, you know, I've, I've seen price action back here. And now it's like, for me, it's, you know, looking looking for momentum around those areas and yeah that's interesting all right so <laughs> we were talking about um, matchups and i think it's that that gave us some really good insight especially into the s&p market the nasdaq mm -hmm. on the way down uh the last yeah. like two weeks and we are the the, the s&p's big target is 44 well a couple of them 44 64 and um, above that 4542. So we were trading in the 45 handle coming into the 44 handle. The NASDAQ had failed up at 14. What, what price did it fail at? Like 14,756? Uh, I think the high was 15,270. Okay. So right and now, we had I an old that quarterly that was 15,370. That so pissed me off. Yeah. I screwed yeah. that trade ups. I screwed that NASDAQ trade up. The hundred day, oh, the hundred day and the two hundred day came you know, in the same line. I, uh, I got to figure out how to share charts. Mm -hmm. and share. But the NASDAQ, it, it was like fifteen thousand one forty six, I think, at the time. Mm -hmm. The hundred day and the two hundred day came in. The the S and P that I can't remember what day that was. That oh, was two weeks ago, wasn't it? Yeah, but I want to. I think the S and P was trading at forty five forty two. It was right here at. Um, uh, I think it was like March thirtieth. Hold on. Once I see what the what the S and P was doing, I'll be able to tell you what the opening range was. Were we really up in the forty six handle? Yeah, we. I think we traded the high of forty. Oh, we did. Yeah, we failed to make it to forty six thirty. Like yeah. 40, thirty. Yeah. Yeah, we came six points from it. Five points from it. Oh God, I screwed that whole trade up. Mm -hmm. I screwed that whole thing up. Mm -hmm. So I, I mean, I caught much of the S and P, but the Nasdaq came in. To talk about technical mm -hmm. awareness. So the Nasdaq, the 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 uh, uh, the hundred day and the two hundred day crossed at at, at fifteen mm -hmm. thousand one forty six. So mm -hmm. it failed. The S&P had gotten up to our 46.36 expiration price from December. And we failed from there. And then we started taking out the lower targets, 45.42. Mm -hmm. And about 45.42, I believe that the NASDAQ was trading around 14,000 when the S&P was at 45.42. Let me see this real quick. Right here on April 6th. NASDAQ came down through 
Yeah, I was right. Okay, 4542 matched up with uh, 14,756. Okay, was, yeah. So when we came down through that, that yearly upside target from 20, 40, uh, 2020, 4542 in the S&P, the NASDAQ also came down through 14,756. Now, mm -hmm. now here's the thing, okay? We use the opening range. People think that we use the opening range, like you were saying, as, as, as an automatic long or short. And mm -hmm. in a way, we kind of, in a, in a very simplified way, we kind of do, mm -hmm. but not to the extent that I'm going to sit there and get, you know, I'm not going to answer the question is, I always have to ask myself the question, what's this market telling me? Where is the market going to mm -hmm. go? So I know on the upside that we're going to, you know, if we, if the market take, take, gets above 4542, I know we're going to go back to 4585, 4590, 4602, 4630, that kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. Ladder, price structure, as you were saying, one, one rung mm -hmm. to the next, one rung to the next. Mm -hmm. Okay, so those matchups come in and, and the NASDAQ is taking out these lower levels and, and, mm -hmm. and the S&P is just kind of sitting there. The NASDAQ gets below 14,756. I think I even tweeted a close underneath 14,756 brings the NASDAQ down to 14,107. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the NASDAQ just kept up going and the S&P mm -hmm. was sitting there. You know, mm -hmm. we kept talking in the group, who, who's going to win? Yeah. Short NASDAQ, yeah. and I was long S&P, you know, we had those divergence, those very yeah. few days. And then finally, it, it, the NASDAQ, the text brought, brought brought the broader index down and it, it pulled everything. Uh -huh. Yeah, and I remember talking to you a week before that. And, you know, I was doing my homework on the weekend because, you know, we just went from March into April and I was like, text. I was like, you know, we have all these targets aligning right at the settlement price. You know, we had monthlies, we had quarterlies, we had the settlement targets, you know, it was like 14,145, 14,109, 14,095. We had all these things congesting. And I was like, you know, the market's going to gravitate to all to those levels that, you know, when, when they're piled up like that, the market just gravitates with them. And, you know, just seeing like, just seeing how the market trades our targets is, you know, it gives you a roadmap. And so I guess back to, you know, what we were talking about, the, the mindset, the execution, the technical awareness and putting it all together, right? It's like, you know, you could see that move coming from a mile away, but if the mindset's not there or the execution's not there, you know, that's going to, you know, take away our advantages in the market. And so in order for us to, you know, catch those moves, you know, we, we have to, you know, come to the screens every day with abundance knowing that, hey, like, I'm, I know where the market's going. I have a thousand points to work with in that. Like, I have 300 points to work with in the S&P. If I don't get my move on today, well, you know, it's not going to break a thousand points in one day unless, you know, it's a, it's a market sell off. But and if it does, we have to be there does, to catch that move. Yeah. It, well, and, and if it does break and you're not in it, it'll do it without you. But yeah. here's the thing is, is, is life is a lot easier when you join the market, not fight it. Right. Exactly. And, and how do you so how did you how did you get from fighting that market? You, you came in, you would do I, you were on this. <laughs> I, just, I wish I didn't, but I'm losing my train of thought. But how did you get? How did you get from fighting it to joining it? How did you, how did how did your mindset? I want to I want to talk a little about that. How did you start to put it together? I guess the mindset was. I mean, if we're diving into you know my my psychology, I think you know I I, I was all types of boggled up, right? I had I'm very competitive, very emotional. Um, you know, when I do something, I give it all my effort, and I think that was one of those things where. You know, I, I learned so much about myself in the last two years. And, you know, each time around, you know, I'd see the competitive competitiveness, you know, take from my trading. I'd see the emotions take from my trading. I'd see, you know, the expectations take from my trading because, you know, I wanted to catch every move and I wanted to trade every price point and target and our plan. Yeah. And, you know, I think for me, I started to realize, you know, just listening to other traders, right? And they're just like, hey, like, I know you emphasize this so much, like the less we trade, the happier we'll be. And for me, I felt like this is my job. Like I needed to trade from, I guess, 8.30 my time to three o'clock. You know, I, I need to trade my ass off for nine hours. And that's not how the game works. You know, yeah. it's, it's, we're, we're blue collar workers, but we're not, you know, a typical blue collar worker, right? You know, our job is to, we have two hours to execute at our best. And then we have to get the hell away. Because the moment we start staying after capital flows is when I, for me, I started to make all the mistakes, really you know, cool. not, nothing would truly go wrong in the first two hours. It was always, you know, oh, I, I have some expenses. I, I can clean them up. And, you know, I'm trading a market that I don't have an edge in, you know, it's, 
it's called the opening range breakout for a reason. You're taking the breakout momentum. You're trying to catch that big sweeping move and position yourself from the right spot. And when there's no momentum in the market, I, I can't trade my, my system effectively. I don't have an edge, you know, trading, in, you know, 10 point ranges. It's like, that, that's not how I trade. And, you know, for me, it took some honest reflection being like, hey, where am I falling short? Where am I making mistakes? And for me, it's like the biggest mistake was just over trading. And so the moment I started to realize that, hey, I need to take less trades, but I have to be 100% confident in those trades. And so I just, you know, I, I stopped beating myself up, you know, because I just felt like for such a long time, I was trying to force the opening range. Like, hey, every trade needs to be from the opening range. Every trade needs to be from here. And it's, it's not like that because we have so many areas to execute from, especially in these markets, right? In multiple markets, I've realized that, you know, a lot of these moves don't break until late in the day. So it's like, am I really going to overtrade the first 30 minutes when, you know, we could have 500 point ranges in NASDAQ, 100 point ranges in the S&P. It's like, I don't need to do that. Like, I need to wait until my conviction level is through the fucking roof and then I have to execute. And if I don't catch that move, well, you know what? I'm going to be here tomorrow to catch that move. And I think, you know, for me, it was just, you know, removing removing that guilt that I think I associated with work where it's like, you know, my, my work is to, to clear my mindset, to, you know, review my trades, to dig deeper into myself. My work isn't to, you know, bang out four or eight lots in, in the NASDAQ and, uh, you know, see what happens. Cause like, I, I know how this, how this thing works. You know, if I can manage my expenses in NASDAQ, there's going to be that one trade that, you know, cleans up all those expenses and more. I just have to be there for it. And, you know, that's something I'm, I still work on. Right. I think, once you're an over trader, I feel like you're always going to be an over trader, right? It's just a, it's a, there's a certain personality who's the over trader. It's that person who, you know, yeah. wants to win, who has, you have, or we all have, but we all over trade. We all have days where we screw up and we just can't judge those days. We just have to see it as part of the game and learn from it and grow better. How do you, uh, how, how important is being confident, carefree, fearless, and focused? It's kind of become a, a cliche in our group, but you know, being CCFF, how how important is being CCFF, which is it's I know it sounds silly saying it, but it's shorthand for confident, carefree, fearless, and focused. How important is that to you when you're trading, and how do you how do you build it, and how do you maintain it? That you know, might... it's not something you build in the market, right? You can't you can't start trading and be like, I'm going to be confident, carefree, fearless, and focused. It's like, no, you have to structure your routines, your habits, your rituals in a way that fulfill all four of those things, right? So for me, it's in my pre-market routine, confidence for me is I love listening. Music gives me confidence. So I, I put that in, in my routine, you know? What makes me carefree? Breath work, meditation, right? When I can be solely to myself and not have a thought on my mind, that's carefree. Well, what helps me focus? I do brain training drills uh, to get my mind going before the market. And fearless is having a plan, right? If you go into the market without a plan, you of course you're going to have some doubt about it because you don't know where you're going to trade from or how you're going to trade. The fearlessness comes from the preparation in your morning routine of, hey, this is where we're opening up. I see this target that I'd like to execute from. I see this target I would like to execute from. And you kind of just visualize all the ways in which the market can trade, right? So I, I don't know where the market's going to go. I'm not trying to predict the market. But hey, if I see, you know, there's a big target below the opening range and there's a big target above the opening range, well, Okay, those are two areas I want to execute from. I'm going to try to get them on from the opening range, but if I don't, it's going to give me the patience and the fearlessness that you'd be, hey, wait for the market to set up around that target if I don't get them on from the opening range. And, you know, instructing that confident, carefree, fearless, and focused mindset in your pre market routine also goes for your post market routines as well. So it's like, you know, you need to work out, you need to eat healthy, you need to, you know, get rest, you know, you need to do things that are going to push you. So you, whether that be, finding a new hobby or a new sport or, you know, like I, I just picked up Muay Thai. I, I've been boxing for a few years, um, but finally picked up Muay Thai. And that's something, that, you know, there's, it's like I'm being a student again. So I'm learning and taking on that, that growth mindset perspective where it's like, okay, I know I'll box, but, you know, uh, I'm not too good at this Muay Thai thing. and something I want to get better at. So it's like you have to construct your, your life in a way that benefits your performance in the market. Um, and there's so many ways to do that. You just have to find out what resonates with you because we're all different at the end of the day. You know, we're very similar in that sense where it's like, we both love to work out. We both love to, you know, do yoga and, you know, be with our families and be with the people we love, right? That, that, that's what kind of releases us, and, you know, puts us in the right headspace. But for other people, you know, that can be, you know, going on walks, you know, um, 
playing video games, whatever it is. Like, just don't associate like guilt with whatever you find pleasure in. Play golf, exactly, right? I'm too old for my tie, so I, I, I took <laughs> my back and my knee were no good. So I took up golf at 50. I just had to learn how to play golf at 50. Um, you know, a, a lot of traders come in with with uh, pressure. You know, they come in, they have to, they have pressure from, uh, I don't know, you know, got the bills, they've got bill pressure. They have to make money. Um, yeah. Bills, they've got pressure. And I know you've got those pressures. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, you've got family pressures, you know, um, uh, your mm -hmm. wife, parents, you know, uh, other people that might not understand, um, mm -hmm. you know, you're, 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 you're I hate the game. I hate the word game and, and, and win or lose. And I know that we use those words colloquially, mm -hmm. colloquially, but um, you know, we make money, we lose money. Uh, we, we make in our group, we make money, we spend money. We don't lose mm -hmm. money. We let a trade get away from us. But um, I think it's really important to note because I think traders oftentimes think that this is, this is a way to get rich quick and, you know, mm -hmm. um, no. <laughs> no. And it's been, I, I can't, I, I, I can't emphasize enough the struggle and how proud I am for you going through the and not giving up on yourself, not giving up on this business, you know, but um, how you had struggled in order to put all three of those things together, the, your, your execution, your mindset, yeah. your, 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 your technical awareness. So how, how important do you think it is to find other outlets for that pressure or to make sure that you can somehow relieve that pressure for that two or three hours a day that you're that you are, we, I'll spend more time in front of the screens, but I don't spend much more time than maybe 20 minutes a day actually. Mm -hmm. trading. If I'm spending yeah. more than an hour, if I'm trading for more than an actual hour during the day and not adjusting prices, but I mean executing, then I'm doing something wrong or the mm -hmm. markets are, are extremely busy like we had in January, February, mm -hmm. beginning of March. So how do you, how do you keep that pressure away from you when you're trading? Either family pressure or, you know, money pressure, bill pressure, or any of that. I just realized it has nothing to do with my trading, right? Because that's something that you're bringing from outside the market into your trading. You don't have to have that pressure when you're trading, but I think most of us don't do the work in order to alleviate that pressure. Um, so for me, you know, when I was really going through it and feeling like, hey, like I'm really bearing the way of the world right now, I just had to realize that, you know, this isn't benefiting my trading. And yeah, I could have all these external pressures that I feel, but they're not real, right? They're all constructs of our mind. So I feel like most of the pressures I had were projections of the standards that I had for myself, where I was like, oh, I felt pressure from my parents. I felt, you know, social pressure. And it's like, you know, these are all things that you're making up in your mind. You just have to realize, you know, what pressures are true and what pressures are you, you know, creating a false narrative behind? Because I felt like for so long where I was like, you know what, like, you know, I, I really got to gotta trade, you know, to you know, make my parents happy, you know, I got to make money to impress them, or, you know, I got to make money to impress this person or to show, to, to be on the same level as my peers, or it's like, that has, that has nothing to do with me, that has nothing to do with my training, what someone else is doing, that's their own thing, you know, I'm, and I guess maybe that's kind of what changes, you know, I just, the perspective that I started viewing my situation from, where I was like, you know, I, I was doing a lot of comparing to, you know, what people expected of me, but, you know, what did I really expect of myself, yes. you know? And I think that's when I started to realize that, hey, like these are false narratives that I'm, you know, putting in my head where I'm trying to project it on the, you know, my parents or, you know, uh, I wouldn't say my friends, but like socially, uh, you know, project it there. Where I was like, you know what? Like I've always been competitive. I've always had high standards for myself. I'm putting the pressure on myself. Yeah. And if I know the problem is within me, then I know I have control of it. You know, I don't have control of the pressure that my parents are putting on me but i realized they never put pressure on me i just put pressure on myself because i thought they expected something me like that's did they really expect you know some 23 year old kid to come in trading and be a millionaire and you know the first year no they didn't expect that but i had that perception and i had to change that view where it's like hey you know i'm playing this for the long game yes and once i started to realize that where it's like you know what like you know they're, they're gonna love me regardless they're my parents <laughs> at the end of the day whether i win I lose, whether I, I don't, like, I can go to jail. They'd, they'd love me at the end of the day. And so when I started to realize that, I felt like that was like the first maturing step in my trading where I was like, you know, everything is self-induced. Like everything that I'm projecting onto the screens and I feel the need to, you know, make money every moment, it's not real. And I made all that up in my head. And so I started to define it for myself. You know, I, I have big expectations for myself. It's, 
You know, I'm not trying to live up to the expectations of my parents. And that's when uh, things really started to change for me because I could come into the market and just be like, just take a deep breath and be like, okay, I'm here. You know, there's, there's nothing to extract from this. You know, if I follow my process to a T and I do the right things, I'm going to get rewarded, whether that be today or tomorrow. Um, and just having that internal peace with yourself, because I feel like in trading, you know, you have so many insecurities and fears and pressures that, you know, that we're so unaware that we, unaware of that when we bring it to the screens and, you know, it affects our trading in so many ways. Um, and I think that's why I always, you know, the work that I did, because you would always be like, Alex, like you're, you're doing the hard work. And for me, I was like, it never really felt like work. Like, these are things I'm just doing in my head. But, you know, when I look back at, you know, all the papers I've written, all the, all the journals I have, and I'm like, okay, I really was trying to, you know, dig deeper into myself and find out, you know, the patterns that I, was, I have. Because we all have patterns. We all have, you know, whether they're negative patterns or the positive patterns, we all have them. Our job is traders to find out what is holding us back and you know identifying where that pressure was really coming from was instrumental in changing my trading because now it wasn't uh it was something within my control you know it, I, I, I can tell my parents that hey i stopped putting so much pressure on me and they're like yo <laughs> we, don't need to re we really don't care and i'm like okay like at that point it's like it was, it was like just, it kind of broke my reality self-induced right, right. It was self-induced pressure, but you know, you, we project these things. We project all these, it was almost an excuse. It was a way for me to be like, you know what? I'm not performing well because they're putting so much pressure on me. It's like, no, you're not performing well because you're putting so much pressure on yourself, but you don't want to take responsibility for your actions. So you're pushing it on them. I believe that's I, where, that's I believe where it came. said that exact thing to you. Yeah. For me, yeah. Once or twice, you know, you write so beautifully and, and uh, you really do and so eloquently so beautifully and the, the papers that you've written and I really, i'm telling you they ought to be published i mean they're, they're they some of the things you've written really ought to be published um you know so that's like your way of journaling right and yeah and we're i'm always careful in in you know we all keep notebooks we have to in in our group we keep notebooks we write down opening ranges we write down uh you know uh matchups like you were talking about you you had pointed out a few of them during during the week uh uh 14,095 equaling uh i forget what it was 4409 i think it, it mm -hmm. was you know so the markets came into alignment and that gave us uh you know do we add to our positions we're all short do we add to our positions are we taking profit are we flattening those sorts of things anyway you know in in uh i'm careful in we all keep notebooks but i'm i'm careful to differentiate in 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 our journals uh about beating ourselves up you know i know oh I know i'm prepared for this question that, yeah because yeah. i i you know i know what mistakes i've made during the day mm -hmm. i don't need to write dear diary i'm a big jag off i, I i'm yeah. the trader in the world. Uh, yeah. i suck really bad yeah. Uh, yeah i should never trade another contract again you know mm -hmm. how how do you keep all of that negativity away and 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 uh, i'm i'm losing you know you know where i wanted to go with this so, i know exactly where you want to go with this so the way i approach like my journaling is well, <laughs> i guess you know if you go back to the first time you trade you know you take that one trade and it blows up in your face and you're like, you know, I'm a fucking idiot. Like, can't believe I took that trade. So stupid. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. And, um, I think it's so easy for us to not dive into, you know, the actual, the real work, right? Like what were your emotions going through that trade? What were your signals? What could you have done better? Like we're so focused on the negative that we can't see the silver lining. And I feel like there are some days where it does call for yourself, like to be, you have to be a harsh critic, right? You have to be real honest with yourself in your, in your, uh, your journal and in, in your trading in general, because if you're not being completely honest with yourself, then you're just going to shortchange yourself time and time again. So for me, I always take it as, you know, if I have a bad day or a good day, right? There's always that critic, that realist critic who's, Hey, I'm seeing things through a very black and white lens. Like you did this wrong but you're rewarded for it. I need to be aware of that. Or, you know, scratch all that, sorry. <clears throat> you have that, there's a critic in you, and then you also have to have that support group. So for me, when I'm doing my journals, I'm usually critiquing my trading, you know? I'm trying to, you know, see my errors because I feel like the errors are what you're gonna learn from. But you can't be 
you can't beat yourself up for making those errors. You have to be aware of them. You have to see where those errors came from. But then, you know, at the end, I always, you know, I've always been my, my biggest fan where, it's, you know, if you look at my journals in the past two years, it's always, you know, you got to keep going. Regardless of how bad this day was, regardless of how good it was, you know, you have to keep going through, you know, through the highs and the lows, through, like, you know, because this game is going to get so tough and you have to be there for yourself. And so for me, that always comes down to my journal. When I'm journaling, I'm my best friend. Without breaking that, that train of thought, um, mm -hmm. had you, have you, and I know the answer to this, but have you gotten to the point in your trading where you're, you, you know, you're just so, so uh, broken hearted and so downhearted that, you know, I, I, I don't want to do this anymore. Or should I, should I do this? Should I do this? A hundred times. I've, I've experienced it more than I feel like any trader would be proud of them. I've been brought to my knees tens of times in this game. Like, and, but those were always the moments that I made the most growth because I realized that it can't get any worse from here. It can't get any worse. And, you know, I think that's where you have to, I guess so that's where faith comes in, right? You have to believe in something higher than yourself and you have to, realize that everything is happening for you, right? If you have the perspective, you're like, oh, why is this happening to me? Like, everything's so bad. Like, oh, whoa, me. No, that's such a terrible mindset to approach it with. You have to realize that, you know, every mistake that I've ever made has benefited me. Every mistake that I've made has made me a better trader. I have to carry those, those failures and those setbacks with me because they've given me the information now to where I can trade successfully. But without those experiences, you know, I don't think I'd be the trader I am. And so hey. when I look back at them now, it's, it's it's they're, they're beautiful moments in my life and i always found you know the, the beauty in the struggle right there, there's nothing nothing, stones. nothing good is worthwhile no, no, right there's stepping stones not obstacles exactly. the mistakes that you've made and, and 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 the mistakes that you made and they've been big and significant as yeah. any of us the the mistakes so but you've used them as stepping stones you know and yeah. not obstacles to block your path yeah uh, what Describe one of those days to me. You know, I, I, they're still fresh in my mind because you they're know, fresh in my mind. You call me and we talk about them, and 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 you know, I always. What did I always tell you at the end of it, at, at or in the middle of it? What were some things that I would tell you to help you through that to keep your, either to keep your perspective or to to change your perspective and write your perspective? Do you remember? Just one day. Like, like, like it's just one moment in your career and you're going to have many moments and you just can't be boggled down by one. And yeah, it, it can be, it's extremely gut wrenching and painful to be like, Oh my God, like I lost that much. And you, you know, start doing the mental math. How long is it going to take to make that back? And you know, you, that's when all the fears start creeping in, right. And you start to feel, you know, the wall starting to close on you. Um, but yeah, I think, yeah, I guess another thing you told me is, you know get back in the market like you can't be afraid of the market like i remember i was down like 20k one day and i'm like demoralized i'm calling you i'm crying in my fucking garage I'm like, Dang, like, I, gotta, like, I can't fucking do this like you know this is so hard and you're like go back up to your screen take another trade <laughs> you know i take that trade and it ends up being like a, a small winner but you know in that moment it's like you know you start to become scared of the market right you think the market's gonna hurt you Fear. But you know, the, yeah, the fear. You're like, oh my god, like, like this is like this volatility is just insane. Like, I can't. Like, I saw the trades, I missed the trades, and I overtraded, and you know, this I end up here, and it's like I'm down 20k. It's like I, you know, I try so hard, I work so hard, you know, I try to make all this work, and you know, I'm, I feel like I'm getting nowhere. Well, yeah, you could you could take that, but you could also look at it from a different perspective, where it's like, hey, I had the worst day of my life. I've what what did you learn from that day is you know the thing i always ask myself is like if you can extract a lesson from the worst day that you had and not let your emotions overwhelm you then you can you know get back on a positive trajectory but if you sit and loaf with that loss and you know knowing me i've you you, you know how many times i've had some bad losses and so for me is i think maybe i got maybe like a, a little immune to them where i was like you know they didn't sting as bad um it's like, you know, I've done this so many times, but, you know, it, it's not going to break me. You know, the PL is not going to break me. It's, you know, it's when I start doubting myself and I start doubting my skills, that's what's going to break me. It's, 
it's yeah. never it's never the money because you know in hindsight it's like you know you, you can make that money back in a day you know it's one trade but you know i think the thing that i kind of got trapped in was like trying to force that trade and i think that's where i got stagnant for a while in my trading from like november of 2020 to like may of 2021 where it's like i remember that day and i was in antigua and powering off and i was in a short position towards the close and you know the market took me down the final moment i got power back on you know, i look at my pnl i'm down fifteen thousand. i was like demoralized and this is like right after i had a really good streak going um and i think i was so fixated on trying to make that trade back in one day that for six months i would see winning trades that i could take profit on but i was just willing to let them go willing to let them go but you know that was like an emotional response to it because you're so you're so attached to the past and so now when I, you know look at these when I look at losses, I realize that, you know, the best thing you can do is just take one easy trade, one easy trade, take profit on it and, you know, slowly start to build back. I always want you guys to, to, especially you, because you and I are so similar in so many ways to write, write everything down. You know, how did you feel? Cause it's, you started off perfectly. I mean, that was really well said mm -hmm. to the whole thing. But yeah. it's a day, you know. It's only one day. Just it's one only a day, but that's all it is—is is a day, a day mm -hmm. in a sea of thousands, God willing. Yeah. And um, you know, the 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 when when you when you blow a bunch of money and in, in a you know because you let a trade get away from you or whatever, you get stubborn, you know, you take a loss. That is, um, that's the by definition, the money is lost, lost. It's yeah gone it's gone yeah it's that's what you there. always told me it's gone like you don't have to make it back that's what you always told oh. me i was trying to think and i was like wait, that. You tell oh, me? You, i was like it's been a while <laughs> you mentioned that it yeah. has been a while. thank god not wood but you know you, that money and you did say that the, the money is lost it's gone it's time yeah. to move on to that next trade and that's why mm -hmm. I, I, mm -hmm. I remember that i remember that conversation when you were when you were upset but it was it's just just you're on your knees, but just come back, go upstairs and take one more trade, and that's it. And then mm -hmm. go out, go sit in the steam, go have a drink, go mm -hmm. do what you want to do. Mm -hmm. Um, and 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 you did. Now, yeah. you know, this is something something too, and and and, and I think this uh, this is something that you're learning and developing with now. But how important is proper account? Uh, I don't see anybody talking about account management. You know, you, you don't see anybody talking about proper account management, taking money. If you make a thousand dollars, take it out of your account. If you make a yeah. thousand, take it out of your account. If you make 200, take it out of your damn account. How mm -hmm. is that? Or how important is that becoming to you and why? Well, it was one of those things that, you know, I, I never thought of. And it, I think, you know, I approach it from the perspective of like, you know, I was in a drawdown for probably like since you know the beginning of my career it was always a drawdown so i was always like oh once i make my capital back then i'll, I'll take money out of my account and it was always then like you know it's like delayed gratification but the delayed gratification that does not help our trading because the moment you take money out of your account for the first time then you start to think of it think of trading differently and i, I don't know how to explain it but maybe the decision making becomes a little bit more business oriented than it does I guess like a, a game that some people can treat trading as and you know once you see yourself make a small goal then you realize hey like you, you compound that small goal and then you you know reassess your goals make them bigger make them more challenging or maybe not more challenging but you know uh more uh more aligned with your skill level and but yeah i just for me i just noticed that i was i was less in a hurry I want to say after after taking money out of my account and I started to view trading in a longer term perspective where it's like my my job is to be profitable on the week not the day I, I want to take money out every week I'm not trying to take money out every day I'm trying to manage my expenses every day maximize my upside every day and hopefully that will translate into me taking my cheap dollar amount that out of the market that I want yeah. That's, um, that's like the wisest thing that anybody can ever say for trading if you yeah. do things the right way well, hopefully that's going to lend that, that that's going to, yeah. you know, you're going to be taking money. If you stick to your process, yeah. that's yeah. going to end up to you taking money out of your account. Uh -huh. It might yeah. not be, it, it might not be this week. I, I've spent more money in, in weeks where I've traded exceedingly well, and I've, mm -hmm. uh, I've had more expenses than I, than I had profit. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm not taking money out that week or the week after, yeah. after that, you mm -hmm. know, 
but I will as long as I stick to my process. That's so mm -hmm. important. But yeah. that's rewarding yourself. You know, it's it's mm -hmm. it, it's it, it takes it away from that that game aspect mm -hmm. of it and makes mm -hmm. it a business. I keep expenses. Mm -hmm. I spend yeah. money, to make money. I spend, mm -hmm. I have to, you know, in this business, like any other business, you get what mm -hmm. you, you know, you get what you pay for, right? I yeah. Mean, yeah. You want somebody to pick up the, the, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. And it's, it's almost like uh, the money is a form of energy, right? And, you know, the moment I, I made my, uh, my first amount of money, you know, I, I went out and I went to dinner and I, I bought stuff for my friends and I was like, did you, you know, sell? like I, 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 I reward myself, I, I did reward myself, but also, you know, I was trying to reward those who stuck around me because, you know, I, I'm so damn grateful to my friends and, you know, especially my brother, like people that I love have always supported me on this journey, like, you know, through the tough times, like, like I wanted to like give them something, like even if, though it's, you know, it might seem small or it might seem nothing, but you know, like that gives me abundance where I'm like, you know, I, I give the people who gave to me, it's like, that's when the mentality starts to change. And you start to go into the market with, hey, if I don't make it today, I'm going to get it tomorrow. And, you know, you're not trying to force anything on the market because, you, you know, you're just you're less reactive now. Um, I and I think, yeah, it's a, it's a positive, it's a self, positive self-reinforcing mindset where it's like, the more I give, the more I'm going to get. And, yes. you know, whether that be outside the market or inside the market, and it's like, everything's going to flow back to you. And so... I think for me, it was like, I was always trying to chase the dollar value back. And so I was always delaying things where it's like, oh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to change this into my, in my life until I get here or until I make this much money. And that, that's a scarce mindset where it's like, you know, you're only, you yeah. only got dealt one hand of cards. And so that scarcity translates into the market yes. as well. And it's like, and it's yes. something you don't realize and you don't understand it until you actually do it. And when I finally did it, I realized I was like, I was operating from, scarcity in my, my entire trading career but obviously you know there's things i had to work on along the way that wasn't just scarcity you know there's fears there's pressures but you know the moment you take that money out of your account for the first time you just kind of like it felt, it felt like i actualized what i dreamt about night in and night out for the last two years where i was like so trying to get to that place and you know i visualized myself in bed at night and you know who, where i was going who i was going to be and i was like i just realized that you know i was just trying to be myself the whole time i was trying to be present i was trying to be you know just light and you know i finally realized so beautiful that's who i am so yeah, you know and, and along those lines too the you you have made you have uh you you have had significant weeks with significantly profitable weeks where you don't take the money out of your account you, you don't properly curate your account so if yeah, you don't that's a bad mistake account, yeah what happens so you, you, if you leave that money if you make Fifteen thousand or ten thousand, oh. then and and you don't take it out of your account. What happens? I guess a good way of putting it is like being the valet driver who gets the Lamborghini, who gets to park the Lamborghini, oh. and you just fuck you just floor that motherfucker. Oh, that's <laughs> that's exactly how it felt like. You know, I went from you know trading three lots in you know first week to ended up trading six lost and I was like you know money was just coming in I was I was getting ahead of myself and I was like you know what I'm gonna be back trading eight contracts in no time and slowly it was just one day it's all it took just overdid it one day and it's like you know I think I was so used to trading three lots I was like yeah it's not a bad day and I peek at my PML I get back all my profits for the month and I was like oh my god like that was one day but you know you sized up you, you, sized, up. you, you sized up way too quickly sized up way too quickly and you know I think that was a, definitely a very demoralizing part in my life. But I was like, hey, this is a lesson I hadn't learned yet. You know, I've, I've had the blow up days, but I've never had a blow up day leading up to, you know, such great trading. And, I, you know, for me, it was just another lesson that I got to jot down in the book. So now, you know, when I'm making money, it's like, hey, pull that, pull that aside because you're not ready to trade that side. You know, you, you have to slow down. You have to learn how to walk before you can run. And... I think, you know, having the bigger accounts just makes for having bigger mistakes. So you have to be aware of where you're at in your trading and being aware of, you know, what, what is your current capacity right now as a trader? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm aware that, you know, I still over trade. I still, you know, counter trend, uh, counter trend trade, whatever, however you say that <laughs> counter, yeah, counter trend trade, you know, whatever. Um, and, you know, and I realized that, you know, I, if, I, if I'm still making these mistakes, you know, 
I can afford to do it with a small size. I can't afford to make these mistakes with big size because, you know, I'm going to be too fixated on the money when I make those mistakes and I'm going to try to make it back. So for me, it's, I'm trying to just operate within my capacity right now. And I'm not looking to size up anytime soon. I want to prove to myself that I could do something consistently for months on end before I move up again. It's one of those things that I learned in January. Like, okay, if you don't, if you don't that's a great point. If you don't, if you don't properly curate your account, take that money out of your account, but yeah. also properly fund your tax account. You got to properly, yeah. fund, if you take a thousand out, yeah. put thirty five percent away in a different account in a different bank. I mean, just go talk to a, mm -hmm. talk to a CPA. Futures trading, mm -hmm. futures traders is uh, futures is taxed differently. Sixty forty long term, short term capital gains it equals out to be anywhere between twenty to twenty four percent. But I always overfund my tax account, so I don't mess mm -hmm. with it. If I if I take a thousand out. I put three hundred and fifty dollars into a tax account, and you know I bank at Chase and Wintrust, so I've got my tax account at B of A. Uh, mm -hmm. My wife takes some money out of, uh, moves things around, and and she'll take you know she'll take money out of my trading accounts and do it that way. But mm -hmm. I reward myself, like you're saying. I I go out for dinner with 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 my family. I take my kids out, or I take I'll, the, this weekend. I took Gabriel out for dinner. It was just he and I, and and then yesterday Elizabeth, my youngest, and I went out for lunch. And we went to the Sox game. All those things. Mm -hmm. So um, that would be my version of me going out with my friends and my brother drop buying drinks and stuff. Mm -hmm. my yeah. kid. But anyway, you know, it's to, we all need to, to have a sense of accomplishment and that's going to keep us treating this like a business and not a game. Yeah. Now, another thing too, Alex, is I think is important that you had mentioned is the, the, the importance of size. So traders are going back to the beginning of the conversation, and this is mm -hmm. maybe good spot to, to, to stop and then, and then pick this conversation up again. But is, is the, the, the traders in the beginning part of the conversation, I talked about the four lanes of traders and, you know, mm -hmm. and, and trade break even traders. And everybody talks about uh, uh, um, risk management as being the most important part of trading. And of course, mm -hmm. it's key, but I don't think it's the most important part. The most important part is mm -hmm. profit management. Mm -hmm. So with that said, it's, it's learning how to, it's not, trading is not about how many, we're not algorithms. So trading is not about how many, how many, uh, uh, how many wiggles we catch or how many moves we catch or how many, mm -hmm. how many short term five minute or two minute or 15 minute bars mm -hmm. we can trade inside or outside of it's, it's about how we, how we increase, decrease, how we decrease our size, increase our size and how we decide when not to trade. Mm -hmm. Now, earlier I had said something about traders that fade markets that, that are counter trend traders. And, and, and to be honest, I do it and you do it too. We take counter trend trades. Mm -hmm. We do it differently. We're using our targets. We're waiting for the mm -hmm. market, you said earlier, so well. Yeah. And we're waiting for the market to come to a target, set up around that target, mm -hmm. and then we trade it accordingly. So if I miss the mm -hmm. opening of this trade, we rally back up to 44.64 in the S&P mm -hmm. this week, I will take a short there if I'm not long going yeah. up. Um, now, that to that might be the definition of, of counter trend trading and, and fading markets, but to me it's mm -hmm. not. I'm trading that target like I do a, uh, like the like I do the opening range. I'm going to be long above mm -hmm. 64 and short below 62. So mm -hmm. and, um, we can do that with smaller size, right? Mm -hmm. We take a counter trend ch trade with the three lot. We come down mm -hmm. through the opening range and we get a chance, as we say it in our group, I had to invent my own language so that things made sense to me. We're going to get fancy. So we're going to sell mm -hmm. top of the opening. We come back into the opening range. We have a tradable high. You know, we know that what the market did on the upside, failed to do on the upside. It will try to do on the downside, right? So we got a 80 point equal distance swing in the, in the NASDAQ. So, you know, I'm going to sell the top of the opening range with the normal unit. And I'm going to sell the bottom of the opening range with the normal unit. And I'm going to have... Mm -hmm. Two units on. So if I'm a, if my unit is a four lot, I'm going to be short eight, and I've only got mm -hmm. the risk of a four lot. That's mm -hmm. learning how to increase my size. I can't learn mm -hmm. how to increase my size, and decrease my size, and not trade if I am not properly taking care of my account. If my account mm -hmm. is not properly funded, mm -hmm. just because if I make five thousand dollars, that doesn't give me the right to go ahead and trade it with these with the intraday margins being small. Uh, you know, it, it doesn't give me the right to go trade three or four more contracts. If I make mm -hmm. 50 to 20,000, I shouldn't it immediately go size up. Mm -hmm. That's a bad idea. We size up when the market tells us to size up. We size up mm -hmm. when the price action, according to our process, mm -hmm. tells us to size up. Mm -hmm. Whether it's a counter trend trade or it's an opening range trade or it's a big target trade, it doesn't, you know, or tradable mm -hmm. high, tradable low, equal distance swing, all of these things that we talk about all day long, it doesn't really matter what it is. 
as long as we've got the opportunity to increase our size. That is exploiting our profit. And that's how you make it in this business. And you mm -hmm. don't get there unless you properly take care of your account. It's not about how many wiggles you catch. It's about the, the trades that you do grab. How are you going to increase? You know, hedge fund traders and institutional traders make most of the money in this business because they've got the ability to size up in the right spots. Retail traders fail for a lot of reasons. 90% of retail traders fail for a lot of reasons. And one of them is they size up too quickly. They don't, they don't learn how to, something that permeates this entire conversation, they don't learn how to trust themselves. They don't know how to believe, or, you know, and put it another way, they don't know how to, they don't take the time to learn how to believe in themselves. They've got mm -hmm. that seated confidence that Mickey Hoffman talks about, you know, that each trader needs to have that kind of alpha confidence. You know, I, I believe in myself, mm -hmm. I'm going to make this happen no matter what. Mm -hmm. But that's not enough. We have to learn how to trust ourselves, trust our process, mm -hmm. trust, trust our, our, you know, mm -hmm. our vision for the market, our thesis, yeah. our, our, the three aspects of our process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the opposite of trust is doubt, right? If you doubt something. Or fear. And I think that I think that's the biggest thing I've seen with some traders. It's just like they, they doubt themselves. They see the market so really well, but you know, there's always that scene in the back of their mind where it's like, you know, I'm, I might be wrong, or you know, am I seeing this correctly? And they start to second guess themselves. And when, when you're second guessing, you trade's gone. Take it's you're making it about yourself when you start having that internal dialogue of oh, like am I gonna lose money on this trade? It it, it doesn't matter. Right. right. You have to take the trade if you see it. Because you're in control of what you fear. You're in control of how much you're going to spend on that trade. You're right. in control of that. And so, you know, when it comes down to trust and executing, it's you have to, like you have to approach the market like being like, hey, I'm going to spend money regardless. Where I'm, where I'm going to spend money, how much I'm going to spend, that's what I'm in control of. But at the end of the day, you know, if there is that one day where you just catch that first trade and that's the winner. Good for you but for the most part you're gonna to have to take some expenses to put that trade on you can't doubt yourself and you can't be fearful of losing money or missing the trade you just have to react to what the market's doing like those are the things that's going to take you away from the dome and the price action and you know it's like that split second is where you need to execute and then that split second you're like oh wait is this the right trade the trade's already gone now your risk is completely different that whole risk profile where you know you know if i'm looking I'm that five point stop in NASDAQ now a 10 point stop. Okay, well, I just doubled my risk on the trade. Now I'm questioning, hey, do, do, I, do I get long here and chase it, you know, and take that, take that risk? And, you know, there's some days where, you know, I see volatility and I'm willing to, you know, put that 10 point hard yeah. stop in. And, and then, because I know once that trade's in my favor, I'm going to put my break even stop in. I'm going to remove my risk okay. and then pay for the trade. All right, pr proper risk reward ratio, everybody. Talks yeah. About. If you're if 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 we're in one of those volatile times where you're going to widen mm -hmm. your stop out to ten points in the NAS, mm -hmm. what are you looking for in profit there? I'm under 200, 300 points, and I'm willing to take that. I'm, I'm but, yeah, I'm willing to I'm willing to take four of those because I I know how fast that Nasdaq can move. Absolutely, all it, you're willing, all it takes is a couple minutes. You're willing to spend ten points to make a hundred. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. the point. You're willing to spend ten points to make two hundred. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, I'm willing to. Five okay. to make fifty, yeah, yeah, and it's, and I think that's such a big thing because in those volatile environments, I feel like that's where I'm most comfortable now. Whereas yeah. before, it's like I had to learn those hard lessons in the volatile environment, but now it's like you know because I see how they just trade those targets to a tick or within a range. It's like I like knowing if I'm right or wrong immediately, and I think that's one of the areas of execution that I've tried to focus on. Where it's like if that trade's not going, you can just get out, and it's kind of like a like. Uh, I kind of call it roller coaster trading. It's like once you take that trade, you feel like you have to be in it for like, the life of it, <laughs> like until it takes your money. And like that's such a poor perspective because like you can just you can get out. You know, there's so much liquidity in the market. You can get out your your four lot, your eight lot, your twelve lot, sixteen. It's like whatever. It's like you, you don't have to take risks like that. You know? And you always said this to me. You're always like, I'd rather pay commissions 100 percent of the time than lose money. Mm -hmm. And from there, it's like you know. When you, when you start to internalize that thought, it's like, okay, well, I don't have to sit in a trade that's not working in my favor or if it's not doing what I, what I expect it to do. And I think that's why you kind of have to have an idea of what you want to see out of the trade when you take it. Because like, if I'm expecting it to break out and then I take the trade and it's just kind of sitting by my entry, well, that's not the trade I intended to take. So I don't have to sit in that trade and wait for it to do anything. I can get out and wait for another opportunity. It's about managing your downside first and foremost. Managing your expenses. That's and that's another. Yeah. That's something to 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 that's worth I think pointing out mm -hmm. too. 
when I started trading in, in the late nineties, um, I know, I, I know that I don't look only a couple years older than you, but I'm old enough to be your father. I've got kids your age. I know. But anyway, when I started in, 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 in the late nineties, and I started as a clerk, turn the air on in your house, for God's sakes. Dude, you, the, the AC's yeah. dead. I've, I've been sweating like a hog for the last hour. You took me really out. toughing it out. Seriously, <laughs> you paid yourself this week. Call the fucking air conditioning guy to come He's coming over. Wednesday. He's coming Wednesday. <laughs> There's no way I'm living in Texas without air conditioning. Oh, my God. It's fucking brutal right now. It's 65 well, out here. I got the air on. This room is about 75. And, you know, this is my second sauna of the day. Yeah, you're Greek. You're going to sweat your keister up before Easter. Oh, my God. How about that? Off one day. Well, you keep it before Easter, baby. <laughs> I, I say that to my kids all the time, and I only get to say it once a year where it's right there. All right, anyway, what the hell was the point that I was going to say? It, um, before I went off in that goofy tangent, what, fuck, what, where were we? What was I going to say? What were we talking about? Uh, managing your expenses. Oh, all right, yeah, yeah. But what, there was You're a, on the pit. There was something I the wanted pit, to oh, okay. story. Commissions, commissions, commissions. Yeah. Yeah. So everybody complains, you know, with uh, 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 <laughs> the micros are not made for retail traders. It's not why I don't want to go down that road. But you know, the, everybody thinks that the, the, everybody gets pissed off the micros being a dollar uh, uh, or eighty cents, or whatever, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. You know, um, the the micros. There are different strategies that 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 I teach traders so that we. Well, you don't do it, but you know, other traders that are that are that are learning you know, how to use the micros versus the minis in a proper way, in a spread kind of a way, and it's, it's effective. Anyway, when I started trading in the 90s, um, in the late 90s, commissions to trade off the floor were going to be like $15, $20 a round turn. You know, so if I, mm -hmm. if I, wanted, to, if I wanted to call up, a, if I was off the floor, if I was home, and I didn't have a computer at home, and I wanted to trade, I called the floor, mm -hmm. I had to put an order through an order desk, you know, they flash that order in through hand signals. Hey, 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 sell 50 at even, you know, or something like that. That costs $15 a contract, you know, and, and through that, the desk brokers got paid, the clerks got paid, the, the order filler got paid a couple of dollars around, you know, a couple of dollars a contract. So um, on the floor, my, my, you know, my, my commissions were a lot less, but I also traded a lot more. Uh, which is funny. It's, you know, there, there aren't too many traders actively trading that have traded as many NASDAQ as I have in my career, NASDAQ futures. I was, I was one of the first traders in the pit. I was a big trader on the floor. I was a very successful, big NASDAQ trader for a long time. I can't stand trading the damn NASDAQ anymore. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I'll trade the NASDAQ when I see something and when it's clear, like that 15,136 we were talking about mm -hmm. earlier. Um, but I trade S&P primarily, S&P and crude and, you know, some silver and gold bonds you love trading the nasdaq you know mm -hmm. and, and i want to talk about that in a second but let me make this point mm -hmm. about commissions commissions are, are important and commissions matter and you need to make sure that your commissions are as low as you possibly can get them wherever you clear um you know mm -hmm. uh, i think it the the best I, I, ib i think is going to be the best introducing broker as far as i at least the guys that i like even though i don't have accounts with them um is is edge clear I like Max, I like Ian, I like Morad. They, you know, they're going to answer the phone, they care, that kind of shit. Mm -hmm. But these discount brokers or the di discount IBs, you get what you pay for. You want somebody to pick up the phone. You want somebody to help you and answer you. You know, mm -hmm. anyway, commissions matter and, 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 and they're, they're important and we need to make sure they're as low as possible. But I would rather spend money in commissions than to lose money any day of the week. I'd rather, in fact, another important line to, to remember, another important thing, and you and I have talked about this a million times, I would rather miss a move than to lose money. I would, mm -hmm. rather, I would rather miss a 100-point S&P move than to, than to have lost five or $10,000 trying to catch it, you know, because mm -hmm. there's always going to be another yeah. move or a 50-point move. There's yeah. always going to be another trade. Mm -hmm. But if I lose 10,000, 5,000, that money is lost. It's gone. I've got to go back to the next trade and forget about the last ones, you know, and mm -hmm. something you mentioned earlier. Okay. I wanted to make a mention of, of importance of commissions, you know, because uh, along the lines of curating, you know, properly taking care of your accounts and, and paying mm -hmm. yourself and things like that. Pay yourself every week you make money. If you make $200 or every two weeks, find a regular schedule. Um, I'm not saying this so much to you because you're on that schedule now, but you know, to people find that schedule that makes sense to you, whether it's every two weeks, 
but don't leave money. And I talk, I call it Capital Preservation Friday. I tweet about it every Friday. I talk about it in our group every Friday to everybody. When I send out my morning plan to everybody, happy Capital Preservation Friday. It's like a, a holiday in our in in our group because mm -hmm. it's a it's a reminder to 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 properly manage yourself, to properly manage your process, and properly manage your account. So and, I, and I feel like there's one more thing there. And to not fuck up your whole weekend. Yeah. There's so many times you go, you have that terrible day Friday, and all you can think about for Saturday and Sunday is just, what could I have done better? What could I have done differently? And it eats at you, and it takes away from that, that peace and that stillness that you need to approach the market the next day. And so then you find yourself in this loophole where Mondays and Fridays are your worst days because you know, you're trying to make something back on Monday. And then on Friday, you're trying to capitalize or in the week on a high note. And it's almost like a, what's this concept called? Like a, like that Friday glow. Like you want to go into the weekend feeling good. And so the moment you start taking a little bit, little expenses, it's like you start really pushing it. And, you know, you can end up in a rabbit hole before you even know it. So, you know, trying to be cognizant that, hey, like I want to go in this weekend feeling as carefree as possible, you know, being present with the people I love. And it's like, if I'm blowing up on a Friday or, you know, I'm over trading on Friday, I'm going to be a little, a little irritated when, you know, I'm with my family and my friends or, you know, when I'm, when I'm out doing stuff that I want to do. And, you know, you have to be cognizant of like the ramifications of over trading on Fridays because you think of Friday as like the end of something where it's like, okay, like I'm, I'm done trading. It's like, okay, well, you, you have 52 more weeks to keep the trade, right? Like you have, 10 20 like so, so many years ahead of you so it's like don't sacrifice that one day because you know it's like that that emotional capital that we have to preserve that yes. you know it's going to allow us to trade at our best on mondays but you know if we're if we have that that day in our head where we're like oh like you know friday was really bad i need to make it back on monday it's like you're going to come in guns blazing monday and you're not gonna you're not gonna be trading your process you're not you're just gonna be trading the money because you're still emotionally attached to friday so it's like taking it easy on that day and you know being it's aware so the bigger picture so important mm -hmm. oh my gosh it's so important a, mm -hmm. a, a sense of accomplishment we need to have a sense of accomplishment since when we have accomplishments i think we take i think that deepens our ownership of everything you know mm -hmm. deepens our ownership of our process of our trading of, of mindset everything um mm -hmm. but i can't tell you how many weekends i've ruined by 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 over trading on friday trying to trying to 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 make it back or trying to make up for mm -hmm. lost opportunity i should have killed it this week yeah. I, didn't. I should have done this i didn't i mm -hmm. You know, I did what I did, and the week is over. I'm not gonna, you know, mm -hmm. Bobby Heffernan on Twitter a few weeks ago reminded everybody what Friday on on the floor meant. If you were trading, if you were in the pit at one o'clock on Friday, even during the winter, in the dead of winter, if you were still in the pit, not sitting in some restaurant having lunch or or having a few drinks with your friends or working out or something, if you were in the pit, that was called the losers club. The losers mm -hmm. club. The pit was full of traders at one o'clock mm -hmm. on a Friday that were down money for the week. Losers mm -hmm. club. I was part of that club too many damn times. So, <laughs> too much of my weekend thinking about yeah. missed opportunity or thinking about lost yeah. money, thinking about, you know, mm -hmm. what's going to happen next week, as opposed to being present where my feet are, to be, to be, mm -hmm. be grounded where I am. And when I, when I'm grounded where I am and I'm with my family and with my wife, I'm with you, I'm with my friends, I'm with my family doing whatever I'm doing and being the best version of myself that I'm being, I'm preparing myself for a great trading week ahead. And maybe mm -hmm. great trading week is I'm going to have more expense. I'm going to I'm going to spend more money than what I'm going to make, but I'm going to stick to my process. I would rather yeah. say another thing. I would rather lose money sticking to my process than to make money trading sloppily. Mm -hmm. that, that it, it, I know that my process is effective. I designed it. I'm the one who put it together. I know it makes money. Um, mm -hmm. I've seen you and other traders move from from that roller coaster to the break even phase into that profitability phase and 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 I, it's it's the privilege it truly is the privilege of my life to be a part of your journey as you've allowed me to be and i, I mean i can't tell you how god willing alex i hope you get that chance to to and i know you will work with traders to make that to make that difference in their lives it I loved providing for my, I love providing for my family the way that I do. You know, it, I, I love every day. I love the act of trading. I don't find it stressful. 
some of the positions I found myself is, you know, have certainly been fucking, you know, from trading have certainly been stressful, but the act of trading to me is not stressful. It's something I love doing. I love everything there is to do about it, but the great privilege of my life is to, to, to work with you guys and, and to work with you primarily mm -hmm. in other terms in, in mentoring, one-on-one -on -one mentoring. And, um, there was, I, you know, you've heard me say this many times. I studied to be a Catholic priest, as you know, uh, it's a time to mention it on, on the, the Easter vigil, but from the time I was 23 to 26, 20, 23 to 26, I think I started at the Merck as a, you know, runner in, in, and work my way up. And as I was going to get my membership to fill orders, uh, I decided to maybe study for holy orders instead of filling orders, mm -hmm. maybe holy orders, uh, celibacy was not my thing <laughs> not my thing amen my, oh thanks god but anyway you know my wife janet janet reminded me a couple years ago right after we had started the group that you know and i was tired of complaining about how much time i spend you know uh, how much how, how much harder i work now anyway that i i get to blend the the two things that i love most uh trading and and you know trading and teaching or trading and mentoring mm -hmm. I don't teach. I don't like saying that because yeah. I, I don't, I'm not a teacher, but, yeah. and I don't consider myself one, but, you know, just, just going, walking that journey with you, man, that, that is, that is, it's yeah. been the privilege of my life to see you battle and fight and call me you know, literally, you know, yeah. feeling like you let me down, you know, yeah. like let your mom and dad, your family down, your brother down, your family down. You know, and just so upset, and 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 I know that feeling, man. I know that feeling, and and to help guide you through that, because mm -hmm. I know how to get out of that too, mm -hmm. and then to help help you along your or just walk that path along with you as you become consistently profitable and learn how to exploit your profit and and increase your size. Mm -hmm. It's been I, Alex. I got to tell you, it has been the great privilege of my career to be able to have been part of your journey and, and and to continue to be part of your journey i look forward to mm -hmm. all the wonderful things you're going to accomplish in your life yeah but it's yeah deep. it was deep i mean it's so true but i felt like you know we we've, we've been through some pretty uh some highs and the lows and it's like just reflecting on how far i've came how far we've, we've grown as grown our relationship it's just like it doesn't it seems it's surreal to me it was like, you know, I remember, I remember seeing you on Market Health for the first time talking. I remember being like, oh my God, like I, I would love more than anything if that guy would mentor me. Like, and then, you know, I felt like six months later, like I, you called me on the phone. We did our first one on one. I was like, kind of almost like shocked, I was like, like stuttering and like mumbling. I was like, I'm like, I just don't, I don't believe this is real. And, you know, just to see like the relationship we've grown and like just, you know, to see how far I've came to the trader and through all your help, it's just been, yeah, just mind-blowing to me so thank you for everything that you've done for me and for always being there for me thank you kid you yeah. know the depth of character the depth of character that it takes to 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 face that 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 fear to face that fear the depth of character that it takes to face that fear and and turn that fear from an obstacle into a stepping stone you know to mm -hmm. to, to make it a little less strong where it becomes maybe that fear maybe becomes doubt I'll, I'll leave this to Denise Schul to, to decipher whether or not this is psychologically terrible, but, you know, but in my mind, at least fear maybe moves into doubt and then doubt, you just move from, sorry, you move from doubt into trust, you know, mm -hmm. trust. When you move mm -hmm. into trust mm -hmm. with, with, with your intellect, with your depth of character and the depth of your soul, man, there's no stopping what you can accomplish and what we'll accomplish mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. yeah so let, and i think let's, that's what, let's, let's not go in any more trading this this is fucking too good end on a high note <laughs> yeah i think yeah. listen and i think i, I want to do this I, I want to have more conversations like this and we'll, mm -hmm. we'll post them on youtube yeah um because i think it's you know i think it's really really valuable that that traders that are struggling to find their way into profitability or maybe even struggling to break themselves from the roller coaster phase into the break even phase and the profitability know that first of all i this is not a get rich quick this is you know any of the photos that, that people see of of 
of dudes standing next to their hot, you know, 10 girlfriends, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and their, their little red Ferraris um, are both rented, you know, mm -hmm. that, that's, that's, if, if that's the lifestyle that you want, that yeah. is this. Now I've had yeah. those cars, you know, and, and, yeah. and that kind of shit and that stuff goes away quickly. What mm -hmm. lasts is, is who you, who you, and you spoke so beautifully about it, who you discover that you are and how you grow mm -hmm. and the constantly working on being the best version of yourself every mm -hmm. single day. When we, when we stop trying to move forward is when we start, start moving back. There's no standing still in this business. There is no room for complacency. If I am not actively moving forward every step of the way, my weaknesses are in the background, doing push-ups, getting stronger, waiting to pounce on me when I decide that I can coast. Mm -hmm. There's no coasting. We yeah. move forward or we're going backwards. And mm -hmm. every single day, every day is a struggle. Some days are easier than others. But when traders come in and they listen to this video and they know that they know that 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 there are other traders out there that have been through what I've been through, that have been through what they've been through, that have been through what you've been through, mm -hmm. and are willing to come in here and be honest about it as you have. And I can tell you guys, we didn't we didn't plan this conversation. I mean, we talked uh, obviously and just talked about what we were talking about, but we purposely decided to kind of keep it, you know, outline free, me and Alex did, and just you know, kind of kind of free flow because you know, yeah. See, conversations goes because usually we have pretty pretty you know our conversations are usually pretty good yeah. this one turned out exceedingly well let's hope i was, I was sweating for about half of it it <laughs> slowed down but, I, yeah I, sorry they, they, they go to a hotel there's no way I'm yeah. <laughs> there's no yeah way. back it up yeah. Jim. those kids together we're going to the four seasons there's no way yeah. i'm staying in that hotel we're staying yeah. in that hotel. And I, th I think, you know, just touch on what you just said, um, you know, trading is a human condition, right? Because we're, 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 everyone who participates in the market, we all have emotions. So we're all going to go through the same experiences, right? But being open and honest and, you know, a group setting like we have in the PACS group with the one-on-ones or with the, the group mentoring sessions, it's, you know, it, there's so much value in being vulnerable, right? Because you're, you're going to help someone else see it from a different perspective or maybe someone else was scared to talk about it but this, but felt ashamed and it's like you know I felt one thing that I always brought into the group is I never felt ashamed of any of the mistakes I made and I'm willing to openly talk about it with anyone because we've all made these mistakes and we all will make these mistakes and so for me it's always been you know what experience can I share with others that could potentially help them and I think you know that's that's the mindset you have to approach it with you know be, be willing to be open with yourself and with others because, you know, the moment you share your truth is, you know, the moment you'll start to realize them. You had a great line the other day about vulnerability and I, I wrote it down and I'm looking for it. It, it was mm. what we were talking. I, yeah. I've got, I've got, you know what, here, yeah. here's, here's one. Somewhere in there. I'm not focused. You will. Uh, wait, no, this isn't you. I've got, I've got, I've got little quotes that you've, that you were, I don't want to climax when the market opens. I want to peek into I don't want to. I don't want to peak when the market opens. I want to peak when I don't want to peak. Uh, I that's not you either. That's but not me. <laughs> I write down, I write down uh, quotes. To, you know, especially yours. And I don't know where in the hell what it was, but you said something the other day, and maybe it was it. it the way that our group works is that I, you know, we open up at the markets open. I come in at about eight o'clock, eight fifteen in the morning. I talk about what I think the market's going to do. I talk about what my plan is for the day. And then at 8.30, when the indices open, I trade and, you know, with everybody and we all trade together. <laughs> and then I help everybody kind of stay focused on our process and grow through that. Um, but on Tuesdays, we have group mentoring. And that group mentoring starts after the close at 3.30 in the afternoon. And it can last as long as, my God, I think last week we were there until 6.30. It was an, exceeding, it was oh. an extraordinarily long one, but... Um, you know, we stay there for as long as what the traders need or as long as my time, you know, uh, can afford to. Um, so to group mentoring on Tuesdays and then and then one on one mentoring and stuff during the week. But you had said something and I, I think it was about group on Tuesday about being vulnerable. You know, the, mm -hmm. uh, do you remember what that was? I'm, I, I, Maybe I know where you're going with it. I 
don't remember per se what it was. No, can, uh, well, you, you just said it again. And, and then, of course, I go off on a stupid fucking tangent that took us away from it. I always do that. I hate that. I hate that I do that. Sometimes there's wisdom in those tangents. I think it started to rub off on me. <laughs> no, no. You, that's yeah. the point. All right. So, the, but learning how to be vulnerable. And, 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 and that's not easy. We're not quants. You know, we, we are not quants. So it's not all about the math. Of course, the math matters and our targets and all everything matters. But we are not quants. So, um, you know, it's not all about math to us. It's not all about the numbers. And a lot of traders, I was talking to, to a trader last week um, who's about my age. He's been very successful in his life. He's been trading for the last few years and has found it so difficult. And he thought that, listen, as long as I've got a process and as long as I've got the math and it fits and I can back test and all of this stuff, I'll be successful. That's just simply not the case because he's had yeah. to learn how to be vulnerable, vulnerable with me, vulnerable with the market, vulnerable mostly with himself. And that's mm -hmm. helped that, that's helped improve his relationship with his family, mm -hmm. with his wife and his kids. You know, it's helped improve every aspect of his life. And that's I think goes back to what we we're what I was trying to say earlier is mm -hmm. that if we're not moving forward, you know, we're, we're if we're not progressing, we're moving backwards and mm -hmm. there's no standing still in this business. Complacency will kill us. I'm not. Mm -hmm. it, if if I have if I have a great month, I am not the next Tudor Jones. If I have a terrible month, I'm not um, you know I'm not the the biggest asshole in the world. I've been mm -hmm. I've been the biggest asshole in the world, and I've been you know the the guy who thought he was going to become the next Tudor Jones. I'm me, you know. I'm Pax, and it, you know the truth lies in the middle, and I've got to be willing to be yeah. with you, and you've got to you know and and the market and all of those things to me. To me, I see it all as one big thing, you know. Mm -hmm. I see it all, I, I see it all integrated and not sectioned, you know, and not compartmentalized. Mm -hmm. We can yeah. keep, keep things compartmentalized, we're screwed. Yeah, and that's the complexity of trading, right? Like weaving all those things together. And I always felt like, you know, that's why I always viewed my vulnerability as a strength instead of a weakness. So I was like, if I can be honest, honest with myself and honest to others and that's going to allow me to, you know, find the honesty within the, the market, what the market's actually telling me, because I'm not going to have any baggage because I know my strengths. I know my weaknesses. I know where I can improve on. And if I know all those things, then, well, there's, there's nothing else to know, right? You know, trading about fully understanding yourself. And this is a quote that always stuck with me. It was, you know, if it's, if it's an investor's job to know the ins and outs of a company, then it's a trader's job to know the ins and outs of themselves. And that's what always kind of, you know, pushed me to dive deeper into who I am and, you know, find those, those things that are holding me back in my life because I know whatever is going on outside the market is going to eventually seep its way into the market. And I need to understand why those things are happening, why these things cause me to be emotional and why these, why these things are, why, why they're obstacles in the first place, right? Because sometimes they're but sometimes we can create these things. Sometimes they're real. And sometimes we just aren't even aware of the issue. And so it's diving deeper day by day, trade by trade that, you know, we're going to find out who we are. We're going to, you know, we're, we're, the, the screens are going to show us what we're made of. And, you know, I just have to be there in order to find out who I am. And that's preserving my capital. So, so trade, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Our screens are our mirror. Our screens mm -hmm. are you know and 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 um you know we we all only have we all only have to worry about that next trade the trade that's in front mm -hmm. of us. anything that's happened be, be, be anything that we've done five minutes ago yesterday two days ago it doesn't matter mm -hmm. that's why i don't that's why i'm not a big chartist i'm not a big i'm not a big chartist i really don't care what happened five minutes ago i care about what's going to happen in five minutes but i can only take care or 10 minutes or an yeah. hour day but i can only focus on what's in front of me what is the market doing right now and what is that market telling me that it's going to do that's mm -hmm. what i care about indicators don't matter to me charts don't matter i mean they they matter in a way but you know they need to be integrated the right way and and i think that our process the PAX process our process i think does that you know it does it effectively for me and my family and it does it effectively for you and your your burgeoning career and your family too Let's end this here and we'll do another one next week. Um, yeah. Response we get on, on YouTube bar and, you know, we'll, we'll, I'll tweet it out and, and get it out there. But and you guys can, can find Alex and I at um, www.thepaxgroup.org. Um, this is the first time in any of these videos I actually did this, I think. www.thepaxgroup.org. You can find me on Twitter at paxtrader777. 
again, PAX Trader 777. Um, I got a lot of, lately on Twitter, I've got a lot of impersonators or a lot of fake PAX accounts, and they're trying to solicit uh, cryptocurrency trades or Bitcoin stuff. I don't solicit anything on, on, on Twitter, so um, I've got nothing to sell anybody. I've got nothing to try to, to, to try to sell anybody. So if anybody tries to DM you on Twitter, it's not me. Not, not necessarily, I'm just saying in general. So Alex, thank you for spending your Saturday afternoon with me. No, uh, thank you. That was great. Do you remember uh, from um, when you were a kid, do you remember what the, the, the response was for Cristo Sineste? What kind of a Greek are you? I know, I'm a, I'm a fake Greek. No, you're not. pseudo Greek. You have to call your father and find out. Cristo Sineste means he is risen, and 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 I don't remember what it is in Greek. It's Anestes Kleitlufrithufa. I forget how it's. Yeah. My and Jenna, Jenna, my wife is Greek like you, so she's going to be pissed off that that I don't remember it. But anyway, happy happy Easter. Thank you. Happy you Easter. as well. I love you. You. I'm so proud of you. You are such an outstanding young man. And I'm very, very, very grateful. It's a great privilege in my life to be part of your life and to be part of your journey as a trader, Alex. So thank you for putting that trust in me, kid. Oh, I love you too. And thank you for always being there for me. All right. I'll see you in a bit. Best trading mentor ever. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. That means a lot from you. How do I do this?